It's the Joe Show with me, Joe. Welcome to Window Wandering Wednesday. This is the episode where we look out of beautiful windows from around the world and talk about the latest in business, technology, startups, pretty much cool shit news. Uh, there is a podcast version of this, so if you'd prefer to listen to this instead of watch it, you can go on any podcast provider and search for Window Wandering. You'll find it. And if you just stumbled on me listening to the podcast, there's a YouTube component. You can Google Go Go Joe Show and watch the visual version of this to see all of the beautiful windows we look out of. But that said, there's so much to cover in today's episode that I had to write it down. We got stuff like Google's internet dreams through balloons have been popped we got custom robot brains we got no more needles on injections we got apple watch measuring your blood sugar we got alexa acting on its own twitter acquiring revenue and i'm gonna do a deep dive as always we start the show with a deep dive i'll do a deep dive into what happened with the gamestop stock if you've been following it it just rocketed as they say to the moon. We're going to talk about it. Why did it happen and what can we learn from it? All of that and more on today's episode of Window Wandering Wednesday. So let's wander. It's the Joe Show. So again, welcome to the show here. We're going to be talking about a bunch of headlines, getting my opinion. You're going to learn something and you're going to be the most interesting person that you know. I also want to point out if you want to support me and you're listening on the podcast, you can check the notes and you can actually subscribe and help support me because I do this in my spare time. So it'd be awesome and dope to have some supporters or even more helpful is sharing me with a friend and telling them how awesome I am. I would also super appreciate that but let's get into it deep dive into gamestop and we look out our first window here which is in san francisco usa we're inside of someone's apartment it seems like we got a nice folding like room divider a nice blue lamp some plants it's an overall good room not really a great window though looks very sf on the outside there's a <laughs> electrical telephone wire pole box right there um yeah Looks very SF. But uh, getting to the main story here, the deep dive into GameStop. As I mentioned, if you've been watching GameStop, there has been some craziness happening on that stock. It's kind of like Reddit, a subreddit, Wall Street Bets versus these big hedge funds. What happened? Why did this happen? Why did GameStop jump up like 200%? Uh, overnight. It's a hell of a ride and let's find out what exactly went on here. So GameStop, the stock, GME. Actually, if you're not familiar, GameStop is like a video game company that has brick and mortar stores. So they had these actual physical retail locations where they sold video games, video game consoles, video game related paraphernalia and merchandise. That's what GameStop was, very brick and mortar heavy. I believe GameStop also owns Funko brand, the Funko Pop brand, which is these like little figurines of your favorite characters from all of pop culture. Um, but it's been an unmissable sight in the uh, recent months here and also in the recent hours. Uh, the video game retailer, uh, which has been in its stock, which has seen its stock rise more than 20 times since March, that's 20, 20 to 20 X. Uh, Lowe's is currently in an epic battleground stock pitting Reddit day traders versus legacy hedge funds. Here is the basic rundown of what happened. Uh, the stock GME was first pitched as an investment on r slash Wall Street bets about two years ago, but the current craze was built up over the past 12 months. Members on the subreddit r slash Wall Street bets, Reddit is like a group of sub communities, and so this is a sub community called Wall Street bets where they just talk about the stocks that they're betting on. Uh, they believe that GameStop with 5K brick and mortar locations, that's 5,000 brick and mortar locations, could turn around its fortunes by going into a more digital model, making some sort of rundle, as Professor Scott Galloway would call it, a recurring revenue bundle or a rundle. Uh, on August 31st, 2020, Ryan Cohen, the billionaire founder of pet company Chewy, bought up a big position in GameStop. He currently owns 10% of the stock. Uh, he also planned to modernize the company by having a board seat 
and getting in there to make some sweeping changes through this big purchase. In the months since, a number of prominent hedge funds, uh, such as Citron, Melvin, and Capital, revealed that they were actually betting against GameStop, so they were short selling it, short selling it, meaning they were betting that the stock would go down. That's what a short sell is. Typically, in short selling, you borrow a stock and then you sell it to a buyer at a lower price. And if the stock falls, you can buy it for a cheaper price that you sold it at and return the stock to the person who lent it to you. Very confusing. Let me read that again. You borrow the stock and then you sell it to a buyer. And if the price of the stock goes down, you get to buy it back for a cheaper price than what you sold it at. Thus, you make money. One risk of short selling is called a short squeeze. Since you have to eventually return the stock you borrowed, problems can arise if there's a limited supply of the stock. In a short squeeze, the underlying stock will get bid up as short sellers try to get their hands on the stock that they have to return. Also, in options trading, there's a right with no obligation to buy a stock at a certain price was also driving up the GameStop stock as Institutions that sell these options were buying the GameStop stock to hedge their position. This is all very confusing. Let's read that again. Short squeeze, the underlying stock will get bid up as short sellers try to get their hands on stock that they then have to return. So they, they're buying up shares of this stock that they're going to have to give back because they're only borrowing it, right? Uh, and then options traders get involved as well. And options traders... Uh, means that they have the right but no obligation to buy a stock at a certain price, usually higher than what it is currently, or sometimes lower. Uh, it was also driving up the GameStop stock as institutions that sell the options, the, the like the Robin Hoods that sell the options, were buying up the GameStop stock to hedge their position and hopefully make some money on selling these stock options to traders. The GME stock is now on an upward tear as these market mechanics play out and R slash Wall Street bets traders coordinate their efforts. So what happens is a lot of day traders go on R slash Wall Street bets and a lot of just young, rather inexperienced, but very influential traders head over there and give and take advice very freely. And what happens is that it'll, on this r slash wall street bets they'll get information they'll then spread it within their networks and some of these traders these day traders do live streaming and all sorts of stuff like uh Dekmar trades who i followed for a long time you can check him out she, uh sean Dekmar, i really like him he gives good advice he knows what he's doing uh, and you can follow along live and watch him trade he used to do a, uh, a platform called tradecaster where he was doing this and that's where i kind of learned about all this kind of this, these squeezes and these pops that happen with stocks uh, based on all sorts of stuff like press releases and also these Wall Street bets. And so over the past two days of trading as of filming this, uh, GameStop stock was up 79% and I believe it went even higher. Let's get another update that just came out today on what was going on with GameStop stock. Uh, so here's what was happening. One of the hedge funds, Melvin Capital to be specific, betting against GameStop lost so much money that two other hedge funds, Citadel and Point72, put up $2.8 billion to prop up this hedge fund. I'd hate to be invested in that hedge fund. Billionaire investor Chamath Pralapahati, aka the SPAC man, guy who really got famous this past year for opening up a bunch of SPACs or investing in SPACs, I'm really not sure, uh, got into the mix when he backed GameStop with a $100,000 options bet, meaning he bet that it would go up. Uh, and then on Tuesday, GameStop rocketed, gaining 92%, 92%. That's, that's what we call to the moon. And then for the Wall Street bets crowd, the cherry on top of the cake was a tweet from Elon Musk where he... He is a noted hater of short sellers, so not a fan of short sellers. He supported, or he tweeted support for GameStop uh, and Wall Street bets, tweeting Game Stonk. Uh, and then when that happened, GameStop, of course, went up another 42% to 
after hours following the tweet. In layman's terms, breaking it all down, GameStop was trading for $4 in March 2020. And as of 9 p.m. on Tuesday, yesterday, it was at $209 per share. So if you are currently in GameStop up from that $4 in March of 2020 of last year, it's been bonkers for sure. Uh, Definitely sell your shares now, cash out, it will come back down. This happens very frequently in day trading. There's usually one of these rockets uh, a year. So this could be this year's rocket already in January. Uh, I remember seeing Deck trade something that was at, yeah, again, $2 and it rocketed up to $209, something like that. Uh, It's happened before. Uh, Usually this happens when there's more of a squeeze and some uh, uh, more of a squeeze pattern, meaning that the stock keeps consolidating and having less and less ups and downs, and then it'll just pop up when a bunch of day traders get into it. Uh, it's called a squeeze pattern. You can look it up if you'd like to. Uh, and it usually comes on news of like a biotechnology announcement, but this time it came from Wall Street Bets and of all things GameStop, where I used to go all the time to get games. So again, if you're in it, you should probably get out and reinvest that money into longer term stocks like Spotify or Snapchat. I think those are really good ones, to be honest, maybe even Airbnb. Uh, All three of those are really set up for a bright future. Disney as well, set up for a bright future. I mean, you can't go wrong with Disney, especially now that they have their their rundle, the recurring revenue bundle uh, with Disney Plus. Who knows what they're gonna add onto Disney Plus, whether it's access, early access to their theme parks, getting an, an hour early extra things when you stay at their hotels like if you have a disney plus membership there's all sorts of stuff that they could offer you so disney is another good one um and that is the story of gamestop and wall street bets versus hedge funds seems like wall street bets won this one and there's a lot of unhappy people uh in these hedge funds these really rich million and billionaires that uh, lost probably a lot of their money especially the people that were in melvin capital uh, I do not feel bad for them. That sucks for them. You got to be on top of your game. And uh, yeah, they got screwed over this time. So uh, let me know in the comments what you, if you're on YouTube, what what you think about the uh, this whole GameStop news. And I hope that you learned a little something new uh, that you didn't know about the stock market here with that info. But let's grab a new window. Let's leave California and get into some of this other news for the rest of the show. Salisbury, UK. We got a backyard window here with some nice chickens. Uh, There's a big chicken coop on the left hand side. Pretty rad, very bright outside. Looks like a happy place. We'll stick around with the chickens to talk about Google and their their balloons being popped. That is uh, half a joke and half uh, for real. Uh, So Google uh, and their parent company Alphabet is shutting down Loon, its internet balloon company. Alphabet is shutting down Loon. Loon provided internet from floating balloons. Ooh. I'm sure that It the Clown had something to say about that. But the project turned out to be riskier than they had hoped. The company had commercial service in Kenya and it also provided internet services to areas affected by natural disasters. Loon is working to place employees in other roles within Alphabet and their other companies. It has pledged $10 million in support uh, to... Yeah, help Kenya stay online. That's, that is very important. Uh, and then also dedicated some of that to entrepreneurship uh, and education. So maybe there'll be some interesting Kenyan startups or if there is an enterprising Kenyan startup that's already there, they'll get some money and they'll grow. I think that's really good for Africa as a whole. But uh, Google and Alphabet's balloon dreams, as I've said, have been popped. I'll stop using that joke. It's stupid. Um, Other thing here, Pebble founder launches Beeper, a universal chat app that works with iMessage and others. If you don't remember Pebble, it was a smart watch company, one of the very first successful, really successful uh, Kickstarter projects. Beeper is a new app from these people that can connect with 15 messaging services. It's based on a protocol called Matrix very dystopian, uh, which offers an AI that allows developers to connect with other chat networks using a bridge. So their big 
Yeah, claim to fame here is this API that connects all these messaging services. So maybe you could unify all of your different chats, which would be interesting. However, I wonder if they cover end-to-end -end encryption, which I think is something people now care about quite a bit. Beeper is open sourced, so users can avoid paying Beeper's 10 dollar per month fee and run the bridges on their own servers if they choose it works with iMessage but requires a few extra steps to set up it works across all major messaging system or all major operating systems but universal chat app i it's very interesting uh because i do have a lot of different chat programs that i use whether it's discord telegram signal whatsapp iMessage uh, kick all this other stuff and if it can unify all these chats into one place and I can see all of my chats and where they're coming from or even like unite some chats that I have with the same person in one place, that would be actually very interesting. So check that out. It's called Beeper uh, from the people who brought you Pebble. And uh, yeah, if you suffer with too many chats like I do, then, then there you go. Beeper will hopefully be your solution. Um, pretty... Pretty interesting. Let's see here. What else do we have for our chicken window here in Sussex? Uh, designing custom robot brains for robots. So, <laughs> robot brains. D designing custom brains for robots. Modern robots can move quickly, but computing speeds haven't caught up. Gathering environmental data and calculating plans takes up a lot of computing power. A team of researchers has developed a system called Robot morphic computing which creates customized hardware designs to best serve a particular robot's computing needs the custom hardware performs significantly better than off-the-shelf cpu and gpu units the team is now working on automating the process so to break that down what's happening is robots all do different things there's lots of different types of robots out there and they all have different tasks which means that some of them need to be a little bit more specialized or need help doing certain things like navigating an environment versus i don't know trying to pick up an object and so this company is offering customizable brains or cpu and gpu units uh, that work in unison to perform tasks better and therefore increase the speed of these robots uh, based on the needs of the bot itself. Very interesting. So they're just make pretty much PC builders and making custom, yeah, plugins or custom operating, custom hardware, just custom hardware for these robo uh, robots. Um, I didn't get a name in the, yeah, in the headline here, but uh, um, maybe, no, no, not modern robots. Not seeing the name of this. But if you have a robot company and you're looking for something uh, modern, then modern. Oh, my God. If you're looking for something more customizable, then you can check out this company. Is it a company or is it just out of Harvard? It might just be some students out of Harvard that are offering this. Yeah, it seems like it's just some students out of Harvard planning to do this. Uh, I'll, I'll link in the notes below so you can check it out, but uh, it's solving a very, very interesting problem and it's very important in the field of robotics that that happens. So more power to them. Uh, if you know someone, again, working in robotics, give them a little, little nod, those Harvard or MIT folks. Let's grab a new window here see where we take us for another story hope you're enjoying my content i'm kind of all over the place today and what's going on uh this is a nice snowy window out of germany must be recent because we've had a snow here so this looks like it must be happening right now the snowy window out of germany to talk about no more needles i'm so excited for this i don't like getting shots i don't like uh needles not a fan at all Doctors use blood samples to check for biomarkers of disease in addition to lots and lots of other things. These biomarkers are found in the dense liquid medium that surrounds our cells, but in much smaller quantities. A new ultra-bright fluorescence nano-label can detect these biomarkers in low concentrations has allowed scientists to create a micro-needle patch that can inform doctors about what's going on inside our bodies. This is super interesting. 
and could possibly open up a lot of applications and a lot of things. This is the kind of shit that I want to hear about. The patches only go about 400 microns deep, too shallow to touch any sensory nerves, meaning not painful. There will be a lot of applications for this technology, but for now the scientists are working on determining clinical cutoffs for biomarker levels. That is very cool. Can do things probably like sense glucose. So if you eat something like a like a big bowl of cereal with some oat milk, you can have one of these patches on, Bluetooth hooked up to your phone, and it can give you feedback on your glucose levels and how much they're spiking or not spiking. Maybe they can even check biomarkers for like if you have cancer biomarkers floating around in your body, if you have any sort of, of I don't know if they can do viral biomarkers. Uh, I Maybe, I'm really not sure what we can get out of quote unquote biomarkers, but a patch that you just throw on that's Bluetooth enabled, that connects right to your phone and can give you live data on what's going on inside your body is awesome. I love this. This is the most exciting thing I think I've read in a while. Biohacking is one of the next big fields and bio in general is one of the next big fields. In the next coming decades, this is what we're going to be focusing on as we try to live longer and live healthier. This is so exciting exciting no more needles wait for it if you want to check it out again link is in the description also CRISPR genetic technology lets us edit genes uh, is now able to catch cancer in the act one of the problems with cancer is its tendency to metastasize or spread causing it to spread through the body Tracking the moment this happens is difficult as millions of divisions happen within a tumor. Researchers have found a way to monitor these events using a modified CRISPR tool. By mapping out a family tree, scientists can track a cell's lineage to find out when a single tumor cell went rogue. Usually, Using this technique, doctors can figure out how often tumors metastasize, where the metastases come from, and where the cancer has spread to. It can reveal differences in the biology of the tumor that would be otherwise invisible. Also exciting, tackling cancer, finding out more about how it works, how it spreads, and how to solve this disease, because that's what it is. It's a disease, disease that we can solve, just like aging might also be a disease that we can solve. If you read a lot of literature on aging, it's just the breakdown of the RNA as cells continue to multiply. They lose their genetic information, and thus we get old, so our skin doesn't realize that the skin still anymore, and so it starts to sag. That's why we get wrinkles, and that's why we get skin droops, and that's why we get cancer is because our cells are splitting all the time and, and reproducing and then they just they break down that that's what happens and so if we can solve this type of thing we can potentially get rid of cancer or identify it so early that we can get rid of it before it metastasizes or become a problem so exciting so much awesome stuff happening in biotechnology i yeah fucking love it dude i fucking Love it. And on to a little bit more fun story here. A former ADT, that's a security company in the US that does like home security footage or, or like CC uh, cameras, security company. Uh, a former ADT technician has pleaded guilty to accessing customers home video feeds thousands of times over for four and a half years. He did this by simply adding himself to their accounts, which he had access to because he was clearly working there, which let him watch the feeds at will. There were 220 victims whose accounts were accessed on nine, almost 10,000 occasions, 9,600 occasions. The technician took note of which homes had attractive women and targeted those accounts. He was caught when a customer reported a suspicious email on their AD. T Pulse account. The only reason he got caught was because of a suspicious email. Dude could have kept doing this. He was watching customers have sex for years. What a fucking creep. But also, you just never know where your where these feeds are ending up, man. And who has access to it? Like right now, I'm using a webcam program and someone could have access to that. I probably left it open one time when I was pleasuring myself and somebody watched it and that can happen to you. I hope to God it didn't happen to me, but I'm not going to act like it couldn't happen. It can happen to anybody. Just goes to show how much we got to start start caring about our online presence and security and data and where it's, where it's going and who has access to it because otherwise the ADT, ADTP, whatever it is, ADT, the security employees are going to be jacking off watching us. Like, how crazy is that? Luckily, one saving grace for me, I'm not an attractive lady, so nobody's watching my feed. That is for 
sure. And on the note, back to blood stuff, Apple Watch. Oh wait, let's grab a new window before we talk about the Apple Watch, because we've been on this window in Germany for quite a bit now. We got an Estonian window, it's very boring. There's just a big tree outside and a bunch of people running outside along. Let's grab another window. In uh, Cheboskari, Russia, it's a nice backyard. It's sunny outside, there's plants, but it's very blurry. I don't like blurry stuff. Here we go, here's a Novizad, Vojvodina, Serbia. Uh, looks like a stadium. We're looking over a stadium, and then there's also like an ice cream store in the, in the front. This is a very exciting window. We'll keep it here for a second. Apple Watch, back to it though. Blood sugar sensor is coming in a Series 7 Apple Watch. This is awesome. The next Apple Watch will have a blood sugar sensor, meaning uh, that 10% of Americans suffer from type 1 diabetes with an estimated over uh, 26 million undiagnosed cases in the country. Adding a blood sugar sensor would play a valuable role in prompting formal testing, diagnosis, and treatment. Non-invasive blood sugar detection can be achieved using infrared sensors. Uh, maybe it could also, again, give you some information on if you eat something, how it affects your blood, if it spikes your glucose, and what you need to be looking out for. Now you can do that with an Apple Watch, or maybe later through one of these patches that we talked about earlier. Everything is working together. Everything is working together together so much cool stuff here uh, I am NOT an Apple watch fan but I would totally be up to getting an Apple watch if it meant it was able to tell me what was going on with my blood sugar I'm very curious how things like bowls of cereal affect me personally if it's spiking my blood sugar or not uh, I think it's very um, yeah important for us to know because it can give you valuable insight if you don't spike your sugar a lot when you eat carbs uh, it probably means that your body can handle carbs and you can eat them, uh, whereas some people can't handle them and they should be eating a more vegetable-rich, protein-heavy diet. Uh, but you won't know that unless you know what's going on inside of your body. And for the last two stories here, Amazon's Alexa can now act on its own hunches and turn off lights and more Alexa will now be able to proactively act on what they call hunches thanks to its latest update. Amazon's device has been able to sense habits and ask about them since 2018, but it had to ask permission before acting. Users now can uh, select different types of hunches and Alexa complete it on her own. I think this is a little weird. Uh, this is getting a little bit too invasive. now. Uh, Amazon's Alexa is learning about us. It's going to learn about our homes, how our homes operate. And though it would be nice if I'm leaving the room, if Alexa turns off the lights, there's something weird about that because then if it gets too smart, and I know this is alarmist, it can, I don't know, start turning against us and do weird stuff. Um, when these algorithms start crossing, we get something called Franken algorithms. You can look that up in my uh 2021 tech trends and three to watch out for. We got Franken algorithms where two algorithms start talking to each other that shouldn't be. Uh, and then something weird or bad or evil happens. And so I don't know how I feel about this whole Amazon Alexa acting on her own thing. I think that's, yeah, I don't know. Just the, the, the data that these companies have is getting so, so crazy. It's so extreme. I just don't know what to feel about it. What do you guys feel about it? Let me know in the comments. If this were Twitch, we'd be able to interact and you guys could say shit as you're listening, but that's not. Uh, the last thing here before we close out for the day is Twitter acquired a newsletter platform called uh, Review. Twitter has acquired Review, a Dutch startup that lets publishers and uh, others monetize email newsletters. Review serves major publishers like Vox Media and The Markup. While newsletters might not be an obvious fit for Twitter's platform, it would make it easier for writers to connect to subscribers while giving them a way to receive additional income. Review already supports paid subscriptions. It will also operate as a standalone product. Review's pro features are now free for all users and free for paid news, uh, newsletters. Has, and the fee for paid newsletters has been lowered to 5%. This is really important because I know that there's been a lot of talk around um, Jack Dorsey being an absentee CEO of Twitter and Twitter, Twitter uh, compared to other social media networks like Facebook, Snapchat, etc. has performed extremely poorly since they IPO'd. Uh, their stock only going up like 2%. That's because they have no way to actually make money like, or very, very small ways. I think maybe ads. Um, and it's just not good. So this is very interesting that Twitter is finally making some moves around becoming a platform that makes money and returns shareholder value. Uh, review sounds like it is a competitor to Substack, which is the new hotness right now for newsletters. I'm actually not sure why it's so popular. To me, it's just another 
like small platform, almost like a blog that you can have people pay to subscribe to, like Patreon. You could be doing the same thing through Patreon or even OnlyFans. So I don't know why everyone's so damn excited about it. Um, same with Clubhouse. Clubhouse to me is just Discord uh, for a more elitist audience. Uh, on Discord, you can hop into voice only rooms. You've been able to do that for years. And now all of a sudden it's the new hotness because it's something called Clubhouse and only people with iPhones can access it. I don't know. I don't get it. It's stupid. Twitter required review. I'm curious to see where it goes and what steps Twitter is also going to take to become a platform that actually makes money and cleans up content. That's it. That has been today's Joe show. Again, thank you for listening. If you do like my show, uh, think about subscribing uh, through the link in the notes, through the Anchor support link. Uh, would be very helpful. I'm going to have more and more options to support me as this, again, is not my full-time job uh, or, <laughs> or even something I get paid to do. This is just something uh, that I do because I like it and I'd like to be supported so that I can make it better and better in ways of having higher production value, etc. So... Enough about that stuff. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let us know in the comments what you think, uh, what you learned. Share me with a friend. Have a discussion about something that I talked about with somebody that you know. That would also be awesome. You don't even have to mention me. Just mention these stories to somebody that you know. That also would be rad. Uh, come back every Wednesday for this window uh, window wandering Wednesday show uh, or check out the podcast if you would rather listen to it uh, than watch it. But if you do want to watch it, you can have these gorgeous windows like the one that we have right now in the background from uh, Serbia. It was Serbia, right? Yeah, from Serbia. Uh, you, you'll get to see the windows. Uh, so with all that in mind, thanks again for listening. Come back next week to hear about the latest headlines in startups, technology, science, and business. Uh, until then, though, I hope you wander somewhere cool because you know it. I love you. <laughs>